Lesson 4 Variables and Random Processes In this tutorial, we are going to refine the line technique and learn how to use variables inside messages. As we've seen up to now, the messages we used to control the line contained fixed values. For example, now I go to 30% of the volume, 0.3, in one second, and go back to zero in half a second. But I might want to deal with one or even more dynamic values, perhaps controlled by sliders, for example. This would allow us to gain more control over the patch we are developing. To do this, I need to replace the amplitude value with string 1 and the time with string 2. In programming terms, the symbol for string is the same as the dollar sign. For the moment, we'll just take care of the amplitude and leave the time fixed as it is. String 1, or more generally, the string symbol, followed by a number corresponding to the variable count inside the same message, means that each number coming in through the message inlet will replace the string symbol, and as a result, we will always have a list of two values. If I take a slider and set its properties to go from 0 to 1, we can now have smooth volume changes. We can also connect a print object to check the list we get as a result. More generally, this line used to control the volume allows us to have smooth changes in the amplitude and prevents clicks that might happen if I were to set the volume abruptly using individual numbers instead of ramps of numbers. I could do the same to control the frequency of the oscillator. I take a horizontal slider, set its properties to go from 50 to 1000 Hz, connect it to the message going to the line, and replace the value that corresponds to the frequency with the variable string1. So now, if I increase a little bit the volume, and I start to move the horizontal slider, I can dynamically set the rate at which the oscillator will oscillate. You can hear that a new frequency is reached, each time it is set, in 250 milliseconds, thus producing a little glissando. This makes each change, both in frequency and in amplitude, very smooth. Now we are ready to introduce a very useful object, random. As the name suggests, random is able to generate random numbers. Let's look for a moment at its help file. As you can see, random requires an argument which represents the range of our random path. In this case, we have 5. That means random will generate numbers between 0 and 4. Random requires a bang to generate the numbers. So let's check it. Going back to our patch, we type 1000 as argument for our random object. This means that random will generate random numbers between 0 and 999, which will correspond to the frequency in hertz. The introduction of randomness in our patch allows us to make a step towards the realm of algorithmic composition. This means that our compositions, 
in the form of pure data patches, will behave according to the sets of instructions we are going to develop and which may contain elements of unpredictability. We already saw in the help file that random requires a bang to work. So create one and connect it. Let's listen to the result. Since we don't want to bang it manually each time, we need another object, one which we already met in the previous tutorial, something able to generate bangs. Can you guess? Exactly, it is Metro. So let's create one and assign it a time rate. Turn on the Metro by creating a toggle and listen to the result. We have created a random arpeggiator of sinusoidal waves. We could implement the same random process for the volume as well. Let's select, copy, and paste the part of the algorithm we want to use again. We mustn't forget that volumes work in the range of 0 to 1. Since random is not able to generate floating point numbers, all we need to do is to scale down by dividing the numbers coming out of the random object by 1000. Connect this to the slider controlling the volume or amplitude. And we shall try it. I can now have a more rhythmic behavior by shortening the time of the ramp assigned to the volume. And also, by listening to this carefully, by turning off the metro that controls the generation of the frequencies. Now the generated rhythm is clearly perceivable. As the last thing, I can also add a number box connected to the cold inlets of both metros in order to control the rate at which the bangs are generated. Let's listen to the result now. With this basic patch, I can already achieve an interesting variety of results. In the next tutorial, we are going to introduce the principles of additive synthesis, and we are also going to develop together the first patch ready to use with the data coming from external sensors, which will be introduced in the second part of this series.